and welcome to another episode of Fubar. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to upload a file to S3 using Amplify from a React app. I will also show you how to configure the bucket in the backend and how to set up everything as infrastructure as code. If you're interested to learn more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> I have a couple of videos about S3 and in all of them I think there is some comments about can you show us how to upload files to an S3 bucket. So Amplify is one of those things that you want to learn more so I decided okay let's do it with Amplify that is extremely easy. So this is a very practical video I don't need to explain you much but basically what we are going to do is to use a React page, create an upload form, upload a file to a bucket in S3 and for that we are going to use the Amplify library that I have been using in other examples and then the file will be there for you to use. This is a very simple hands-on video and the application will start on the base of two videos that I created previously. So the first video is how to create a backend using Cognito, how you can uh, create users and user pools and identity pools from your serverless framework application. You can create everything on infrastructure as code. And then the second video is how to create an application with login and signing and create users. And you hook up these two, uh, the backend that we created in the first video. So then you have the full application, the backend with serverless framework, Cognito, and the front end with uh, React, Amplify, and using Cognito to log in and manage the users. So with that kind of base, now we are going to add a new functionality to our application. So if you're logged in, then you will be able to upload a file and you will be able to upload a file to your own private folder in S3 inside a bucket. So that means that different users will upload the files to their own private space and it will not get mixed up. But you can upload it to a shared directory if you want. But in this case, I wanted to make it a little bit, a little bit more. So let's go to the code and get started. So as I said, we will use as a base for this exercise, these two other videos I did in the past, one for the backend, one for the frontend. First, creating uh, an authentication with AWS Cognito in React that the end result looks something like this. This is a front end part. And basically you can log in, log out. And if you're logged in, you can see this message. If you're logged out, it doesn't. It lets you create a new user and everything with Cognito is really good. And then the other video is making the backend to create all these as infrastructure as code from your serverless framework project. So you can check these two videos. They are the base for this other video. I will put them together in one package, one uh, project called Amplify Upload File. We'll have the backend and the client. The backend is the video of the backend and the client is the video of the client. And there is not much more in there than that. But if you want to get the project already packaged and ready to get started with this tutorial, just go to this repository and go to the first commit because it's called initial commit, like all first commits in a project, and you will get the basics to start with this. So basically here, uh, this is my, my app running. I have created a user already and I'm logged in and I can see the function executing. It says hello world. So this is super simple, but it's the base of this exercise. So if we open it in the uh, Visual Studio Code, we can see the backend and the client. And in the backend, we can see the serverless YAML. I just basically change the name of the service. And then we have one function and the Cognito user pool, the Cognito client, the identity pool, and all the Cognito roles the authenticated and the unauthenticated roles. So this is covered in those videos, so go and check them out. In the client, we have the app, basically the config. There is a sample there that you can use to create your own config. And then there is the index that is reading from that configuration file and configuring Amplify, because that's what we are going to use in this 
tutorial we are going to use the amplify storage module and we have the sign up and the login that they're using the amplified authentication to to log in to create a new account to confirm sign up so this is really simple and then we have in the home we are using the api module that is basically calling an api that we have defined that's our api gateway that we have defined in our config so yeah so now we are ready to start so we are going to start by the server side we are going to create a bucket and then we are going to give permissions to our cognito to uh, to do things in the bucket so let's start by creating a bucket we are going to use a uh, cloud formation to create the bucket so we are going to build our uh, definition for the bucket in the resources property at the bottom of everything after all the cognito things I'm just calling this bucket upload as free bucket it's a bucket it has a name that I will define as an environmental variable on the top of this file so I can copy paste this code easily <laughs> and it has some course configuration some uh, this configuration is important because we are going to be calling this bucket from a website so we need to give course permissions so these are just permissions for accessing the bucket you might need to modify this accordingly to your use case but this is how you define course configuration in CloudFormation so now I will be uh, adding the environmental variable in the top of our file and if you notice my environmental variables have two uh, curly brackets normally if you look at the original file it has only one curly bracket the environmental variables but I need to add uh, do a change in our in the way that serverless framework works for the definition of the variables because then we are going to um, need this uh, dollar sign curly bracket symbol for making a reference to a variable from AWS and everything gets very confused so I will be changing uh, the environmental variable syntax in the serverless framework to require dollar signs and two curly brackets so then we can use the dollar sign and one curly brackets for the AWS uh, environmental variable so I will just go ahead and replace all the one curly bracket dollar sign that I have with the two curly brackets so now everything is properly named so that's important so you need to do that for everything all the variables in your serverless framework so your regions your service name whatever you're using these environmental variables you need to rename them now we can go to modify our policy we are going to modify the cognito authorized role policy our existing policy allow us to execute api gateway I'm going to add another permission that in this case is going to let us perform all kind of operations in this particular bucket in this folder called private and here we can see the cognito identity amazon aws.com the sub that's our uh, cognito identity specific for each user so basically when we upload an image they will get uploaded to this uh, folder that will be different for all the different users so they will have their private space and the images will not get mixed up we could upload all the images to a share folder and that will be fine but this is where the double brackets um, kind of needs to be in place because if you see this dollar sign curly bracket cognito it has uh, one curly bracket because that's an AWS uh, variable so that's when they get mixed up so that's why we need to change the serverless framework one so now we are kind of ready in our server we just deploy and voila our bucket is there with the right course uh, permissions and the policy for cognito authorized users now is modified that we can store or do whatever in these folders so after the deployment is completed i will move on and change the client so i will speed this up now we can move to the client side and there the first thing we need to do is to create 
the config for this um, bucket. So I will do here in the config sample because I don't want to show you my specific config. But basically what you need to do in your config.js is to add this parameter, the max attachment size. This is the size that of the uh, file we are allowing to upload. And then this information for S3, the region where the bucket is and the name of the bucket. So you populate that with the right information in the config.js and then we can move on to modifying the index that's where amplify gets configured now we have configured the cognito we have configured the api but we have not configured the storage so we are going to configure the storage module with the region the bucket and the identity pool so this is giving the permissions when it's logged in so it's super super simple to use amplify you can find all the details on how to use this in the documentation and then now we will create a new a new folder i will call leaves and there we are going to add this library it only has leave and here we will just it's a auxiliary uh, method that will let us uh, upload a file to s3 so then we don't need to worry about this in our uh, code inside the home where we are doing this change and we can reutilize this everywhere so basically this just uploads a file and it changed uh, the name of the file to have the date so we know when it was uploaded and then it's calling the amplify storage putting the file with the file name and then it's returning the key for us if we need it for something so this is kind of a help uh, method so now if we go to our home what we need to what we want to do is basically to modify the home page to have an upload button and the, then we can upload that image to S3. So I will do some changes in the home to remove the current behavior that is just to call an API. I don't want that anymore. So I will modify that and basically I'm removing all the mentions to the API and then I'm removing this method component in mount because nothing is mounted. Uh, we are not calling any API when the page loads so we can remove that and then we can remove that test API and render API and we can add that, that handle file change and the handler submit that basically handler submit what it does it uh, checks the file size according to what we put in the configuration and then it uploads it's using the auxiliary library that we just created and it goes kind of that's it there is uh, not much uh, magic in this in this page it's very very simple and I'm not the best front end this developer so don't ask me too much uh, but this does the job then the next thing we are going to do is to render this so this is only going to render if you're logged in so basically it's rendering a form with a upload uh, control and there when uh, we upload it it just calls checks the file and then we have this button that will uh, call the method handle submit that is the one that will check the size and upload it to uh, s3 it's a very very simple piece of code and then i will just modify the the rendering so if you are logged in it will render the, the upload a file if you are not logged in it will render just the uh, information of the site and then i need to uh, play a little bit with the import i add the missing import remove the extra import and there we add the config the upload a library that we just created some more controllers that we are using and then i just tweaking it a little bit and it's important to make the state null because now uh, we are not waiting for anything when we load. So if we refresh the page, this is what we see. Then I will just upload an image and I will click upload. The user interface is great. It doesn't show you anything. But if you go to the bucket, you refresh it, you can see the private folder with the uh, folder with the username. And then you can see the um, image and it's just uploaded. That's it. Very simple. 
but it does its job. I'm sure you can make it prettier. You can always find the code in GitHub. This was the video for today. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. And I'm now filling with some small content here and there because I'm preparing a series that is coming out and I'm working on that now. But I always like to make these small tutorials that you request a lot. So if you have more things that you would like to see that are simple tutorials, let me know in the comment box below on this video or in other videos. I always read in the comments. As well, you can contact me on Twitter or in Instagram. Around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. So I see you next week with another video of Fubar. Bye bye!